Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. Liverpool have been knocked out of the UEFA Europa League at the quarter-final stage at the hands of Atalanta. Uh, losing 3-0 at Anfield made it an impossible task for this Liverpool side as they lost 1-0 away. Uh, I did one, sorry, one nil away from home, but it felt like a loss because we scored early. We were supposed to have hope. We did have hope. We had belief. You get the early goal and it gives you more hope and all you want is another and another and you think something can happen. I thought something could happen, but this Liverpool side looks like it's running out of steam at the wrong end of the season for me right now. You know, a big title race that we're faltering in, unfortunately, and a Europa League campaign that's already come to an end right now. And, you know, the the game started really well, of course. We get the early doors penalty. Mo Salah dispatches that with aplomb and confidence. And then he has a chance to send Liverpool 2-0 up. It falls to him. He's the man on the pitch that you wanted to fall to. The ball over the top is sublime. It's bouncing. The keeper's out of his area. And he hits it wide. And it's a terrible finish. And he was talking to Costas Timakas after he come off at half-time. And I just wondered what is going through that man's head at the moment. Because he's not playing as well as we're used to seeing. He's not scoring the goals that we're used to seeing from him although he is still scoring somehow um, it's a wild one and I think the disappointing thing for me is if you get that second anything can happen of course Liverpool are into it and the game was so chaotic in that first half wasn't it you know their man for man system Liverpool working really hard to drag players all over the pitch Salah dropping into the midfield Alisson sometimes going into the midfield I know I don't know why um, Trent Alexander-Arnold playing in the midfield and then second half just pff, everything just stopped and Atalanta made a change. They decided to push further up. They were in a mid-block. They decided to go to the high press. And they basically kept us at an arm's length, didn't they, from that point onwards. They pressed. They harried. They were aggressive. They fouled. They grabbed. They did well when they were on the ball. Liverpool, nothing was sticking. Substitutions were made. Nothing really happened. Um... It was a really tough one to sort of watch. And, you know, towards the end, the belief had just been sucked out of me. And, and it was because of the performance of the Liverpool players that I never saw that we were going to be able to turn that around. I never felt like, you know, with 20 minutes ago that we had one last big hurrah in us because... They looked like they had more men on the pitch. They looked fresher. They looked stronger. They looked like they were, you know, knew exactly what they wanted uh, to do tactically to us. They knew how to defend. And that's what Italian teams are really good at historically. They're very good at defending leads. It's why you saw so many 1-0 scorelines in Serie A over the years. It's just that type of a league. And when an Italian team has a league, a lead, sorry, it is incredibly difficult to break them down. And Atalanta proved that. And he did it in a completely different way. It wasn't a drop back, but... Um, backs to the wall defending it was this new modern high press sort of Italian system um, and it was an incredibly tactical victory for them over the course of the two legs and just massively disappointing for Liverpool obviously we're getting your thoughts live as as we come into to this show and stuff now and uh, I've asked obviously our discord people for, for their views I'll get over to Twitter we'll open the live chat up for everybody a little bit later on and stuff but yeah uh, I'm going to start off with some of these now so um uh, DPC54 said, I think I would still feel confident if I could have seen something, but how many minutes has it been since we last had a, a goal from open play? And it's too many minutes is the answer, isn't it? Obviously a penalty tonight and nothing at the weekend, nothing against that Atalanta. It's been a, it's been a long goal time, hasn't it? I mean, what's that? 91, 82, 70, uh, probably add another 30 odd minutes onto it going back into the last game. And you probably 300 minutes close to in, in, in since we've actually scored a goal in open play. And it's so tough to, so tough to take, isn't it? And it feels like all of our form players have just ran out of form at the, at the wrong time of the season, doesn't it? And we did have chances tonight. We obviously had that Salah one. Um, we obviously had the, the Virgil van Dijk one at the back stick, which maybe a little bit of a half chance, but that's not enough. And, it, you know, it was, but towards the end of the game was the big disappointment for me is when you just want to throw everything forward. Liverpool were, ran, were out thought and out thought tonight, weren't they? We completely and utterly ran out of ideas, unfortunately. Um, so a little bit more confidence here from Squiggly UK at least we can just focus on winning the league now 
If only it was that easy, and it's massive, obviously, and we're not out of the league, we're not, but we're in poor form, and that makes it difficult to win a league title when, you know, Arsenal and Manchester City now have just been knocked out of the Champions League last night. It was great fun while it lasted, by the way, enjoying the football. Uh, not so much enjoyment as last night for me tonight, unfortunately. Um, so we move on, uh, DPC 54, I thought the, the first half we had much better chances, but the second half we were miles off it, and you're absolutely spot on there as well, and... Uh, we'll move on again, um, Johnny Fallon. I don't think this long. I don't think this Klopp long goodbye thing has helped us at all. I think we are worn out by it, and players got to be feeling a bit of worry for not having any sign of a new manager yet, etc. Would have been time enough to have announced Klopp departure at last international break, and you might be right there, Johnny. You might be right, and and it might it might have nothing to do with the Klopp long goodbye as well. It might just be that, you know, the injuries that hit us a, a couple of months ago have really sort of made it difficult for us now because we've got players coming back into the side who are trying to get some form together. You know, Trent Alexander-Arnold, although had a great first half, clearly tired in the second. His passing was nowhere near as good. Diogo Jota doesn't look to be in great form at the moment, but he's coming back from an injury. He's not hit the ground running as he. Darwin Nunes' form has dropped off probably because the amount of minutes he's played. Salah coming back from an injury hasn't been the player he was pre pre injury. Again, struggling. The likes of Diaz have kept going. McAllister, Endo, they've kept going, but their form has just plateaued or you know, no, come down a little bit, I suppose. So it's difficult, isn't it? And it. It's shit talking about injuries as a reason, but that's what I truly believe it is. And, you know, it's shit hearing the same things from people over and over again. The injuries are bitters on the arse and all this type of stuff. But sometimes the truth hits. And I think that's what the truth of the matter is for me. Um, I'm not sure these lads have it in them. Clock went for the A team uh, to get um, goals. They missed glorious chances again. I don't think any reason excuse will be defensible after what we've seen, says Titch Green. <sighs> Heavy, heavy. I can't read that. That's too small. Let me read it from this screen. Thanks, I though. I didn't know it even did that. It never used to do that. Uh, it's a team squad. I'm talking about the additions from this season that has overachieved this season. Like I mentioned before, we have been too emotional, both fans and players. In regards to Klopp announcing his departure, and in my opinion, it's come on top. We need to take emotion out of the running, but it's hard to do so. Things are moving at a pace off the pitch, so the only way is up. Best thing about football is it never stops. It never stops. The Mitchell and Webb's sketch springs straight to mind, Si. Um, we can't just give up on a Premier League title, though. You don't get to six games to go with a chance of winning a league title and give up. That's what these players won't be doing. They're not going to be giving up. I'm not going to be giving up, uh, but it's going to be difficult. And to get to turn this around, the last three sort of well, the, the, tonight's result isn't it? But the the big result from tonight, uh, the loss at the weekend, and the big loss last week at Atalanta, Atalanta. There's no time to wallow in self pity. These lads need to pick themselves up and go. For for it. And the problem that we've got at the moment, as I see it, is we've got no one, I think, who can lead us with their form. You know, like Andy Robertson's been playing really well, but he's your left back. You need a Salah, you need a Nunes, you need a Diaz to grab a game by the scruff of the neck and say, no, we will not be beaten today. And McAllister's been that man for the last month or so, hasn't he, up until the last three games. And he's starting to tire as well. Jones is playing himself back into form. Sobersly looks miles off it at the moment. Uh, Connor Bradley, unfortunately, has gone down injured. Virgil's the captain, can't do too much from the back. Um, and so when you've got players who aren't in good form and you've got a system that's... You know, everyone knows what we're doing now tactically and Atalanta have shown everybody, by the way, in the last week or so how you shut down Liverpool and Manchester United before them as well. That's what it comes back to to me. It comes back to that FA Cup defeat to Manchester United. That's when I think our form started to falter, our loss to our big rivals and it's kind of unravelled a little bit from there. Obviously, um, the, the Manchester United in the league wasn't good enough either and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, really, really tough to take, to be honest with you. Now, I'm going to get down into some of these... Um, other ones then. Uh, can't help but feel like the team reflect Klopp right now, knackered and in need of a rest. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Bloody hell. That's sly, isn't it? Uh, Mikhail Borisov, uh, Borisov, sorry, completely drained at the worst possible time. Really hope we can turn this around. 
Uh, we've got what you think of Klopp's decision over two legs. Love the man, but he's had a mare, uh, said Adam Harrison. Yeah, I, I think his, his substitutions definitely didn't work tonight, did they? It was it was a bit mad. Chloe was apoplectic at the fact that Louis Diaz was taken off the pitch. I know people were apoplectic uh, about the fact that Kurt Jones was still on the pitch. I was a bit dumbfounded that we ended up the game with Cody Gakpo at left wing back slash left back. Not really sure. And, you know, Jaden Dans comes into it, but what's he going to be able to do when you're playing with what four attackers and six def- uh, four defenders and six attackers or three defenders and seven attackers and absolutely no midfield on the night um, it seemed a strange one to me but you know this is the problem with going for it and having to get goals like that it's not a situation that you're in week in week out is it and when this type of things happen, you haven't really got anything to go to. There's no plan A for being 3-0 down in a game and what you do. You don't plan for that. You plan for nil-nil start and you plan for going and trying to win a game of football from that position. Obviously, you can go down in games and you do, but you know it's not often you've got 90 minutes to, to play against an Italian side in a crunch clash in the Europa League quarterfinals and you're 3-0 down. What do you do? You rely on magic. You rely on your big players. And unfortunately, we had no magic and the big players didn't stand up tonight. Um, Adam Harrison uh, again says meh sorry oh no I picked that one up anyway yeah and the app uh, you know when you leave a job and you can't be arsed with anything those last few weeks because you know it won't be your problem oh mate I think Klopp's there those subs are a case in point oh mate don't don't question his motives man uh, please don't uh, Nathan Mace, I think we've been treated to some of the best football anyone could see in Klopp's time at Liverpool and that's why we got so disheartened by terrible form that we've been here for weeks now. You're right, some of the football was magic, it was fun, it was exhilarating, it was balmy, it was wild and unfortunately that probably wildness and you know magic has just run off, hasn't it? Um, I think something is happening behind the scenes, says Jay, okay. Um uh, Lonatic says first time in a while I've been down a bit on the team don't know if it's tactical or the players but didn't take enough risk throughout they look scared to fail um, yeah maybe uh, Jean Alviso or Johan we were horrible I just hope in my deepest of hopes we can finish the league strong and see what will happen there sorry to say it may end with one cup oh god but yeah one cup is it's the shittest cup it doesn't really mean anything to it it it, it that cup, doesn't it, it is better when you win other trophies. It's not very good on its own. But that's not how the players think. Um, it's not how the manager thinks. And it could end in one cup. And, you know, unfortunately, that might be a successful season because not many teams win trophies nowadays with 115 charges FC down the road, um, hoovering up all of the trophies with all of the uh, advantage that their 115 charges has given them. Um, so we might have to just wait and see for a little bit or, you know, the hopeful will think we can still do it and we can still do it. We just need to turn the form around sooner rather than later, of course. And then, you know, maybe, maybe this team needs fresh ideas. Maybe this team needs fresh impetus, direction and to do something different for a little while. Um, it's sorry, I'm sorry to say it, but. You know, with Klopp's chosen to leave, I don't want him to leave. I've never wanted him to leave, but maybe we'll get better. Uh, Ronan, thank you for the super chat, mate. Um, that's Gakpo's 14th ga- game this season without attempting a single shot as a forward player. That's absolutely criminal. Wow. Um, would it, is it To be fair, is it his 14th game up front? Because I don't think it is. He's had a few in midfield as well, but it's not a good stat. It doesn't read right. Uh, Plissid says Klopp's right his tank is empty and I think struggling to motivate players also this noise about the last dance has been a distraction also it shouldn't have been a distraction for them it shouldn't have been a distraction for them uh, thank you GT and NIB for something that you've sent uh, I can't see what it is but thank you it's like a number one maybe uh, Klopp has been upended by man to man defence uh, Klopp is already on the beach I don't think he's on the beach I think it's disrespectful to say that I think what he's finding and I, again I know it's boring but I think it comes down to the injuries and I think we're running out of steam and I think that's incredibly difficult when a team collectively goes off the boil or runs out of steam or whatever you think it is 
there's not much you can do, but I do think that tactically we got it wrong tonight. Uh, I think we started the game perfectly. I think we dragged them into a sort of end-to-end -end battle, which is exactly what we wanted. But we didn't win our individual battles. We weren't good enough man-to-man -to -man, uh, tonight. Man-to-man -man marking as well has, has made it incredibly difficult for us. And we had to drag and run and hurry. And we were tired because of that, because that was not something that we're used to doing. And when you take yourself out of your comfort zone, you'd end up having to think about things a little bit more. And it's not as fluid and it's not as easy for everybody to sort of play those right passes and think about where they go. And it's why we saw probably so many aimless passes because we used to play as being in a certain situation without thinking you can flip one around the corner. And no, for example, Andy Robertson's there, he might not be there tonight. Or Trent was there, he's not there tonight, etc., etc. So yeah. Uh, do you want to open up the chat for us as well, mate? Uh, thank you. Uh, click, uh, and then we've got Bobby. Uh, I hope they've had a good open and honest chat where everyone airs their views with a view of this is where we are. We look backwards, we turn to stone. So so for themselves, push. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I don't know whether that's going to be something that we do, um, but it doesn't... Maybe it, maybe it is time for clear the air chats. Maybe it is. I, I, I don't know. I mean... I've never been in a sports club uh, at the level of Liverpool, obviously. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know what point you need that. I mean, I was never in a, uh, you know, I played up until under 16 level. We never had clear the air talks. We got beat. We just went to school the next day uh, and whatever. So, yeah, maybe maybe it's time. I haven't got a bloody clue, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah. Can I get over to Twitter for a little bit? Uh, Nick says... Um, over here, let's see what I can get this one up. Uh, Nick says they look closer to last year's team in the last month or so. Funny, I still wouldn't mind all this losing if we won against Palace at home. Still have the lead in the Prem now. This is just extra deflating. Yeah, you're right. It is. Damn it. Rachel thinks there's going to be a clear out of players in the summer. Oof. Greg's VR, oh, the whole thing. I tell you what. Well, Klopp said he wanted to win the game. Yep. Yep. Uh, anger from Jack, who just says this was a horrific effort, absolutely pathetic, and take losing, but the effort we showed in the second half was embarrassing. Ouch. Let's get back into some of these YouTube comments because they're flying in. <clears throat> Uh, Rory Gogarty uh, says started really well with the goal in the first half but couldn't capitalise on it Atalanta got back into it and couldn't break them down subs didn't work shouldn't have taken Diaz and Trent off I think I think you're right on the Diaz one and maybe that was to do with the time he's you know uh, played so far this season I think of, of all the players maybe it's him and Virgil maybe you've played the most minutes out of everybody so tough for Louis but Trent I think it was a tiredness thing I think he couldn't have gone 90 tonight um, Plissid says tactically I think we should take it slow in the upcoming games and try to be organised first it's probably not a bad shout is it to be fair um, Nicholas Higueras is still hoping for the league oh yes but it seems so hard now doesn't it um, Dan just says start Dan's for team Dan says start Dan's from the off nothing is working up top give him a run like it but I don't think we will uh, Kieran says Absolutely woeful second half. Didn't have a plan B. Looked like we were too scared to commit players forward with 15 minutes to go. We had nothing to lose. Oy, 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 oy. That is a... Uh, yeah. Difficult. Difficult. OCM Rick. Despite all the captains of national teams, we're missing a true leader in the midfield. I think you're right there as well, you know, maybe like at that sort of shouty leader, is that what you're sort of talking about? Um, Mike Forrester, uh, love Curtis, but how has Klopp decided he should play the 90? Uh, yeah, I don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of people were saying that. I didn't think he was particularly bad or worse than any of the other players tonight. Thought Sobersly was the worst midfield player, that's for sure. Um, in terms of his passing in the first half, was horrific at times. Um, Curtis was still, you know, I think the reason he keeps Curtis on is he can keep the ball in those tight positions when you've got two to three men around. Yeah, I think his touch is really good, and he, you know, it didn't work in that we weren't turning and going forwards, which is why I might have liked to have seen the introduction of Ryan Gravenberg. But what he will do is he's going to keep the ball and he's going to pass it back. The problem is when you pass it back and you pass it back and you pass it back, there was they just lost respect for us. 
and that's why they were kept going at 90, 93 minutes or whatever. They were still piling forwards, not running into corner flag because they lost respect for us. They lost respect for our firepower and what we were able to do on the ball. And that's a shame, to be honest with you. Um, it's annoyingly ironic to see Klopp's teams be defeated by the very thing that defined our teams pressing, says Rubes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. When you say it like that, it really is. It really, really is. Uh, Aidan McCormack, uh, Chris, I know it's not easy, but we've got to believe, support and stay the course. We are Liverpool, Aidan in Peterborough. You'll never walk alone. Thanks. I'm Chris in Liverpool, age 41 and a bit, um, who appreciate your comments. And we do. You're right. We do have to believe. We do. We do. We do. We do. But it's tough, isn't it? Um, listen, I've got to go and think about what I'm going to give for these players tonight um, in the player rankings. So I'll be live with the player rankings in just a few minutes. Thank you to everybody who's watched, of course, as always. Thank you to everybody who's super chatted, not just on this show, but throughout the evening as well. You do help to support what we do here. We appreciate every single one of you. To the subs uh, on Redman Plus as well, you are the reason that we're still making videos uh, and we're able to employ people like the wonderful Chloe and Dan and Aaron and Joe and... Um, yeah, it, thank you so much because, listen, this is still better than running a restaurant, which is what I used to do. And I love it. And I love talking to you guys and speaking to people from all over the world. And I've made friends all over the world because of it. So, yeah, thank you for the support. Uh, drop a like on the video and I'll see you next time. That's right. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.